Hi there. I'm Matt with K15T and let's talk about Confluence whiteboards. Let's say your team is setting up to do something really new and fun. Like say you want to make a really cool swag store for your organization so you can connect your customers with your brand. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Great project idea. Just like how do you take that from this sort of pie in the sky idea to planning and then working and then done? Well, that's where Confluence whiteboards come in. Much like other whiteboarding tools like Miro or Mural, which both sound so similar, Confluence whiteboards are sort of the place where your team can quickly throw in ideas, then sort of organize those ideas, visualize those ideas for clarity and planning, and then finally move them to tools like Jira and Trello or even elsewhere in Confluence to get working on things. So in this video, we will look at the best ways to use Confluence whiteboards to make your team's idea a reality. So it's time to start collecting ideas from the team in order to understand exactly what this swag store project might entail. And quickly, if you've already got a whiteboard you wanna use for the process, you can find it in a few different ways. You can look through the content tree and open it from there. You can click all content to explore the content view and browse for your whiteboards there. Or you can search for your whiteboard in the search. If you don't find the whiteboard right away, or perhaps you can't remember any of the details to search for, open up the advanced search and you can use the type field to filter just for whiteboards and even filter by the space and created slash edited by to kind of narrow down those results and find the whiteboard you're looking for. Just a note, as of the creation of this video, Search will only be looking for the words in the title of the whiteboard and not inside all of the elements in the whiteboard. So if you don't remember the title of the whiteboard, be sure to use those filters I just mentioned. In this case, I'm going to create a new whiteboard here. So a whiteboard is just a big old canvas you can fill with stuff. And there's a nice lined grid to sort of help you place things. This will be a great spot for the team to start gathering all of the ideas. Now, let's give them a little bit of guidance. First, I'm gonna add some text. So you can use the text tool to add titles or headings or just throw some random thoughts right on the whiteboard. I'll add some text for needs, wants, and sort of, I don't know, unsure. This way the team can sort of group their ideas around these categories. And by the way, you can quickly resize text elements or really any element that you add to your whiteboard to be whatever size sort of suits your fancy. There are a bunch of useful keyboard shortcuts for manipulating text that you can check out using the keyboard shortcut command or control slash or by clicking the more menu in the top right and selecting keyboard shortcuts. Okay, so now it's time to start collecting ideas from my team and I can do this one of two ways. First, I could use the share button at the top of the whiteboard to share it out with my team for some asynchronous collaboration. And this is really great for situations where you want to collect initial ideas from people, maybe before a meeting, or if people don't really need to meet in person at all. The second option is you could invite everyone to a meeting and invite them to bring their laptops. And I say laptops because even if you have one of these and one of these, whiteboards don't work on the Confluence mobile app at this point, hopefully in the future. Once in the meeting, everyone can collaborate on the board at the same time, which is super cool to watch. So how do we get ideas on the whiteboard? Well, hold on. We first wanna make sure that we set expectations for everyone in the meeting around how much time they have to add their ideas, especially if there's a lot of people in the meeting. Brainstorming can be really fun and very effective, but adding a timer helps people focus their efforts and also understand when they'll get a break from all the creative work that they're doing. So anyone on the board can start a timer, they can set it, stop it, pause it, or even add additional time. And when it reaches the last 10 seconds, a little sound will play and then confetti pops in the air when all of the work is done. Fun. So how do we get those ideas on the whiteboard? With sticky notes, just like with your favorite 3D sticky notes, the sticky notes in Confluence whiteboards can contain text and emojis. Ooh, like drawing a little smiley face, you know, like that. And just like text elements, you can use the little floating toolbar to change the text size and the weight. You can make lists and all that other text stuff. Also, you can add text to them and they will change vertically in sides to fit all of the text. You can also make them wider by dragging the side edges. 
Now the default color of the sticky notes is completely random, but you can change it using the floating toolbar. And then you'll notice that all new sticky notes that you go to add to the whiteboard are that new color that you chose. As the team has added ideas to the board, I can see some common themes arising. So I'm going to add some shapes here to help me group those. Shapes are easy to add and I can quickly change what type of shape it is. And this is of course just one way to use shapes. They are so helpful. Just like adding sticky notes, you can also have text on shapes and you can change the color. You can use shapes to make things like process flows or diagrams or UI markups. The sky's the limit. Now the team has added a bunch of ideas and I need to be able to move around to check them all out. So I can click the hand button or use the H keyboard command to move around the canvas. I can click with the hand, like I'm sort of holding the whiteboard and push myself around with it. Or to do this without clicking any buttons or using key commands, you can use the secondary click on your mouse or trackpad and move around the whiteboard that way. If your mouse has a scroll wheel, you can use it to move up and down. Or if you hold the shift key, you can use it to move side to side. Then you can click here to zoom in or out, depending on what kind of picture of your whiteboard you want to get. You can use the command or control key with the scroll wheel to also do a nice zoom. But the ultimate way to navigate a whiteboard is if you have a computer that has a trackpad. They're so intuitive because you can use one or two fingers to quickly pan around and pinch to zoom in or out. It is super fast and very fun. Now we've got some ideas on the board, we sort of need to bring some order to things. And a good first place to start is with a whiteboard template. You can pick a template out right from the get-go, but we find that sometimes teams jump into an empty whiteboard in a pretty wild and free way, and then you need to get things together later. No worries, because you can add a template to your whiteboard at any time right here. There are a ton of templates to choose from that are based on the Atlassian team playbook that'll help your team with things like brainstorming, agile, planning and strategy, diagramming, all that fun stuff. My template has been dropped into my whiteboard and let's check out what new elements were just added here. So right away, I can see that some new sections have been added, which I can also add manually using the organize ideas option here. Sections are a great tool for grouping your ideas, helping guide sort of how people use the whiteboard in a workshop and even create spaces for multiple teams of people to work in one very large whiteboard all at once. You can give a section a name or you can add a text element for a larger heading. What's really powerful here is that when you move a section around, all of the elements inside of it move as one. Ooh. Now let's move all the ideas from the team into the appropriate sections. First, I want to keep the ideas from the first brainstorming session as is, in case I want to look back at them. So I'm going to select them all and copy them rather than just dragging them over. So first, I'll be sure that I've switched to the select cursor. I can also hit the V key for that. Then I'll select the elements I want to copy. There are a few different ways to select elements on a whiteboard. You can select just one element with a click. You can click and drag to select multiple elements or hold the shift key while clicking individual elements to pick just the ones you want to select. So I'm going to move these copied sticky notes with everyone's ideas into the right section. And one fun thing is that when you're trying to position an element, you might want to just sort of nudge it just a little bit in one direction, or maybe nudge it a lot. You can actually select an element and nudge it using the arrow keys on your keyboard, or hold the shift button with those arrow keys to give them a bigger nudge to kind of get them just where you want them. You can also secondary click to get helpful options like locking an element in place on the whiteboard or moving them in front of other elements if you want to get super fun and fancy, which I know you do. One quick note, if you want to delete a section on your whiteboard, keep in mind that all the elements inside it will also be deleted. So if you want to keep those, move them out of the section before you delete it. Now let's talk about lines. They will help you organize your whiteboard and create a flow of thought. And there's two different types of lines you can add. So by default, there's just straight lines, just a total direct path between one element on the whiteboard to another one. Straight lines will always remain straight no matter where you put the elements or how they're resized. The other option are dynamic lines. These are paths between elements on your whiteboards that change as you move the elements around or they try to move around around other elements. They're kind of handy as well. 
Now, there's also different ways to draw a line. You can draw it just right on the whiteboard, as if you want to, I don't know, make a dividing line. Or you can use the anchor points on the edges of elements to start drawing a line. You can just click an anchor point and a new element of exactly the same type will just pop right in there, which is pretty handy if you're trying to make a flow diagram. You can also click and drag at any one of the anchor points to connect one element to another or just let it go on the whiteboard and your line will just end in some random spot. Now, one other thing we have to do sometimes when we're organizing our process here is to add some restrictions to whiteboards. You can add or remove whiteboard restrictions through the lock icon on the top of the navigation. And just so you know, whiteboard restrictions aren't available on the free plan of Confluence. Whiteboards provide you the control over who has access to edit and view your whiteboards. You can also control what level of access someone receives. So if you select anyone in the space can view, but only some can edit, or only specific people can view and edit, then you will need to specify the exact people whom you want to provide access to. So you can get really particular if you want. So the whiteboard at this point is very practical and organized, but we could do more to make it effective using visual elements. I'm going to add the dot voting template to the whiteboard and copy over some of the sticky notes. This template is really great for this situation because the team has a few different work items that they need to prioritize and size up. We can use simple circle elements in different colors to visualize the interests of everyone on the team. Ooh, pretty. And you can even take this a step further. You could add stamps to the board to sort of ad hoc communicate a feeling of something on the right board. These are really easy to add and they're great for getting honest feedback from the team. You could also add a sticker, which are useful for adding some more just like visual fun to the board, maybe replacing or augmenting a heading. There's even some for AWS. So if you're diagramming something in AWS, there are stickers for you. Images are also a very nice addition to a whiteboard when trying to visualize what something looks like or even to just add a bit of animation fun to the mix. You can resize images to make them fit how you like in the workspace. Oh, and like a pro tip here is you can add SVG images. They can be really effective because you can resize them to any proportion and they're always going to be crisp and clear no matter what screen someone's looking at or how far in or out they are zoomed. Really great for infinite whiteboards. But friends, we can really make our whiteboards shine with links. So whiteboards work with smart links, which provide a rich way to review and interact with your favorite web apps and websites. Sound fancy? It is. Drop a link into a whiteboard, and if it's compatible with smart links, you can choose whether you want to just display that URL on your whiteboard. You can display a card with information about the linked content, or you can display the embed, which is full of all sorts of fun interactivity. Like, check out this YouTube video that I can play right from the whiteboard. Or I can click the preview button in the floating toolbar to see an expanded view of that video. That's super neat. Just keep in mind that smart links respect the permissions of the link that you dropped in. So if people working in the whiteboard shouldn't see the content that you linked to, they're not gonna see it on the whiteboard either. Alrighty, let's talk about using this whiteboard alongside the tools that the team uses to actually get their work done. Because the whiteboard is the place for the ideas to come together, but the other tools are generally where all of the action is going to happen. And the biggest and brightest of all the connected tools in Confluence whiteboards is, of course, Jira. And when I say Jira, I mean like all the Jiras. Jira software, Jira work management, Jira product discovery. So one thing we can do really quickly is turn a sticky note into a Jira issue. Like, I have these ideas here that are ready to be turned into work issues so the team can jump on them. I'm going to pick the site, the project, and the issue type. I'll update the summary if I need, and I can even assign it if I want. Oh, and I can import issues as well. So I could just paste the link to a Jira issue and it would show up as a smart link, or I could use the import from Jira button. And this option is really nice for searching for keywords or even doing advanced JQL searches. It's also nice because I can import multiple Jira issues at once, which is nice for quickly populating a whiteboard with a whole bunch of work issues. Now that I have some Jira issues on the whiteboard, we can link them together. And this is only available for Confluence Premium and Enterprise, but I can add a line between these two issues and I can hit link issues and then pick the type of the issue link I want to create and it will just create that link in Jira. Super 
fancy. But you know, we can get even fancier with smart sections. Also a premium and enterprise feature. And I know what you're thinking, what are smart sections? Um, bulk actions, Jira smart sections. Okay, have you ever used Jira automation? It's a super powerful tool for visually building really robust automations for Jira, a lot like Confluence automation, which we made a whole video about that you should totally explore. Well, smart sections, as far as I understand, are like little baby automations that you can use to perform simple actions on your Jira issues right from your whiteboard. They're not, they're not Jira automations, to be clear, but they, they're kind of, is that making sense? These are really great for quick actions, like assigning issues to a different team member or dropping Jira issues into different sprints. So let me show you how we can use these. I've got some sections here for the different sprints the team is planning work for, and I'm going to create an action. In the configuration panel, I can choose a site, a project and issue type, and then choose the field I want the action to change. So I'll have it set the sprint value. So now when I move a Jira issue into this panel, that value on that issue is automatically changed. Super cool. And I could have a second smart section for setting the value for another sprint. So my team can easily work together to plan out the work to take on now versus the work to take on later. And I just have to say, as a past Scrum Master, I love the idea that I could build a whiteboard that's like this crazy interactive planning control board for Jira, specialized for exactly the way my team wants to collaborate. By the way, you can clear or delete actions that are on a section, but just so you know, that won't undo the change that was made in Jira. You'll need to go into the Jira issue to make that change. Also, if you move a Jira issue into a smart section and then hit the undo button, that will move the issue out of the smart section, but it will also not change that value in Jira. But don't worry, if your team is not using Jira to get work done, you can bring a whiteboard into Jira, Confluence, or Trello just by pasting the link of the whiteboard into that tool, and it will show up as a smart link. So you can use the whiteboard in whatever tool you're using. And finally, what if you just wanna move the content in or out of a whiteboard quickly? Like, I want to take the content from a bunch of these sticky notes and put them into a Confluence page. No worries, super easy peasy. You can quickly select one or more of the sticky notes, copy, and then paste it into whatever tool, like a Confluence page. You get a nice plain text output so there's no jankiness with the content that you copied out of your whiteboard. Finally, for those of you decision makers out there or Confluence admins, we know who you are. There are different whiteboard features included in different Confluence plans. So I will just leave those here for you for a second for your viewing pleasure. Also for you limit testers, Atlassian does say that the maximum number of people who can actively collaborate on a single whiteboard is set at 60. That is a lot of people. And there is a limit of 5,000 elements that can be added to a whiteboard. Let's try that out. No, no, don't try it. Okay, well, yeah, 5,000 elements is a good limit. Uh, let's not do that. <laughs> so these are some of the best ways to use Confluence whiteboards. At K15T, we have used whiteboards to coordinate our many ideas and to formulate plans. We've also found them to be really versatile, both at in-person, all-hands feedback sessions or totally asynchronous feature planning sessions. Let us know in the comments the best way you've found to use whiteboards. But this is just whiteboards. There is so much more that you can do with Confluence. And at K15T, we never get bored with exploring those. So hit that like and subscribe button, share this video with a teammate who wants to bring their ideas to life, and join us for another video as we continue to explore how to use Confluence to share what you do best.